We're in the vet. Boo's been getting examined. He's been a very good boy. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. Eight forty AM. Boo slept on the bed all night. And right now I've been playing with him with the laser pointer to give him some exercise. So this laser pointer, it's already starting to die. The batteries are starting to die on it already. It's only been a few days. So this morning I did the thing with the venison nugget again where I incorporate water into the venison nugget and it becomes much more like a squeeze up or a soft pate. And Boo should like it. The only problem is I gave it to him today and he was like staring at it like, what did you just feed me? So I had to take one of the freeze dried chicken bites and um, kind of pulverize it on top. And it's weird, like, I could do that and then feed it to the cats and they won't eat it. They have to see me do that. It becomes like this thing where they have to watch me put the freeze dried on and then they eat it. It's 10.10 10 a.m. right now. And I got a late start today. And the cats are downstairs, Boo's upstairs. So I'm juggling the cats again. And I forgot how difficult that was. So, um, yeah, I feel like everything is taking twice as long as it normally takes. But there's Hydrox. He's outside. I gave him some food. He was laying in the corner by the house trying to find a warm spot. It got cooler last night. It was probably down in the 60s. And right now, Boo's rubbing up all against me. Boo is going to the vet in a few hours. We have a 3 o'clock appointment, so I made sure I played with him this morning to work off a bunch of his energy, and he had a good breakfast. So waiting for him to poop so I could get a fresh stool sample. I do have one from the other day that I've put in a Ziploc bag. I know that sounds gross. Um, but I the reason I did that is because um, sometimes Boo doesn't poop every day, which is not good. But um, hopefully he will before we have to leave. The carrier has been out for days, and um, the wee wee pad has also been out for days. And I put the wee wee pad in the carrier. I'm going to spray them down with some essential oil calming spray. And somewhere I have the pet remedy spray, but um, A, I don't know where it is, and B, I think Boo associates that with like his trips to the vet. and. I'm wondering if that's just going to traumatize him and make things worse. But I do have this small spray bottle of it, so I'm thinking of bringing that with me, um, you know, just in case it's needed. I also have some fresh catnip that I picked yesterday that I might give to him also, like a little bit before we go. So hopefully everything will go well. And... Um, We'll see what happens. Again, it's a new vet that I've never been to before. So it's going to be an experience. It'll be an adventure. Me and Boo, we're going on an adventure later, right, Boo? We're going on an adventure. I don't really call it the kitty cat club anymore because this vet doesn't just do cats. And the vet I took Simba to doesn't just do cats. But when the cats were going to the kitty cat club, that vet only specialized in cats. So, um, yeah, so that's why it's just an adventure. This is the carrier that Boo will be going in, and I already have the top up. Just in case I see a good opportunity to kind of pick him up and put him in there. But I'm not going to do it too early. I have to give myself at least an hour to try to get him in the carrier before I have to leave for the vet. So if the vet's like a half hour away, for example, I have to start like an hour before I think I want to leave to try to get Boo in this carrier. That way it'll give me plenty of time and I don't mind if I'm at the, 
the vet early. But the reason I'm using this carrier is because I feel like this is the strongest and sturdiest carrier of the ones that I do have. So I have this one. I have the collapsible carrier uh, that I use with the cats outside to kind of train them to walk into a carrier. And uh, Simba has just walked into that one, no problem. And Stella has sometimes laid in that carrier, no problem. The problem is when I used it on Boo, the first time I used it on Boo, Boo escaped from it. He was like Boudini and totally escaped from it. Thankfully, he was still in his room at the time. So um, it wasn't like he was in the car or in the middle of being carried through a parking lot. So, so I have that one. Then I have one similar to this one, but a little bit bigger and it does not have a top entry. And that's like an old one that we used for a dog many years ago. So um, that's the third one. And then the fourth one is the soft sided carrier. I want to say it's like a Sherpa or something. And that's a really nice carrier too. And I would honestly prefer to use that carrier, but the issue with that carrier is that it has mesh sides. So I don't trust that one for Boo. Um, I feel like out of all the cats, Boo is the strongest fighter. He was living outside the longest. So he is the one that's gonna try to get out of these carriers the most. So. Out of all the carriers, I really feel like this one is the most secure for him. It is 1.25 p.m. right now, and I am supposed to be leaving with Boo in about an hour. And he has not pooped in the past 24 hours, and he has a history of pooping in the carrier on the way to the vet. Like, Boo gets a nervous stomach on the way to the vet. So what I just fed him was half of a teaspoon, about half of a teaspoon of coconut oil, with one drop of valerian tincture, and then I put a little bit of freeze-dried chicken bites on top of that. So he licked up uh, most of it. I don't know how much of that drop of valerian he got, but he got a good amount of the coconut oil, and I'm hoping that makes him go to the bathroom within the next hour, like before we have to leave. My goal is to try to you know, get him to use the bathroom now while well, he can go in a litter box versus going all over the carrier and the other thing is i make sure he has plenty of fresh water today i added extra water to his breakfast and um he got his herbs and he got plenty of exercise also exercise is also important and um he got play time so he should be good to go i don't know why he isn't it's 2 p.m right now Boo's laying on the bed. He just got a lot of pets. He still is not pooped. But I need to move him into the carrier because we need to leave soon. Okay, Boo. Hopefully he's calm from the Valerian. Okay, so after several unsuccessful attempts of trying to get Boo in here, because what happens is I pick Boo up and I try to lower him into the top of the carrier and suddenly he just becomes like all arms and legs and there's no way to get him in. So then he ran around the house and I had to then not chase him because if I chased him, like, I don't want him hiding under a bed and, you know, somewhere that I can't get to him. So I had to be nice and then I had to, you know, take out the container of crunchies. I actually did put a few crunchies in the carrier and then I was like, well, you know what? I'm not going to waste my time just, um, you know, running around the house and freaking him out. I did the scruff carry technique and I am so thankful for the community cats channel because that is how I've been able to get Boo into the carriers. Something about that, you just scruff him and then he just stops like flailing his legs about and uh, then he could go in the carrier but even now look, look he's trying to get out. Of course he's going to try but I do have the um, pet remedy spray. I found the little one. I'm bringing it with me and I think I'm going to put some, I'm going to spray a little bit in there now. I just gave him a few crunchies in there so he should eat them. He doesn't want, even want to eat them. I just covered the carrier with the fabric that I have specifically for covering the carrier. One goes on top and there's a slot for the handle. The other goes over the front. Now Boo's going to try as hard as he can to get out of this thing and we know he's an escape artist so I just have to hope that this thing is strong enough to hold him, and it should be. 
And this is another reason why I did not want the cats upstairs because this is going to stress them out and then they're going to get stressed out and stress Boo out. So um, Boo has a toy in there. I gave him one of the catnip hearts. And I do have that pet remedy spray and I'm going to spray that also, but I just need to find it. I brought it up, but I gotta find it. I just sprayed Boo's piece of birthday cake with the uh, pet remedy. I did it once on each side and I'm going to put this in the carrier with him. Hopefully this will slide between the slot. Boo has calmed down. I just filled up a little bag of crunchies so he could have a reward when he's done. We just got in the car. Boo's not happy. It's okay, Boo. It's okay. I'm wondering if I should put him in the front seat or keep him in the back seat. I might move him to the front seat. Okay, I just moved him to the front seat because I think the carrier will sit more level. The back seat's like on a slant. Can't be comfortable for him. So this way it's more level plus I'm right next to him. So um, that's good. And off we go. We're stopped at a red light right now and Boo has been surprisingly calm and quiet so far. I would say we're about a third of the way there so far. We are officially halfway to the vet's office. We're at another red light and the road we were supposed to take to get there was closed for some reason. I don't know why was, there was like a cop car blocking it and we have to now take a detour and Boo's been pretty good. We're in the vet. Boo's been getting examined. He's been a very good boy. They gave him a towel with some pheromones on it. But he did poop in the carrier on the way in. Okay, I'm in the car with Boo and uh, we're just about to start heading home. And I just wanted to give my first impressions of this vet. And I am so happy with this vet. I am so happy with the office. I'm so happy with the practice. It was totally worth waiting 10 days for an appointment for. He's a holistic vet, just like the last vet was that I brought to Simba, but the practices are so different. I wasn't 100% happy with um, the vet that I took Simba to, just some of the things um, that I saw there, like how they were handling him and stuff like that. And this vet, oh my gosh, he totally knew what he was doing. He and I were like totally on the same wavelength as far as like raw food and natural food and things to do for Boo and um, just cats in general. And I am so happy. I'm so happy. So basically it pays to, um, it definitely pays to shop around and do comparison shopping for vets. Um, if you're not 100% happy with the vet you go to, definitely uh, try other vets. We're paying for, when we go to a vet, we're paying them for their knowledge and for their resources and for their service. So they're actually working for us. And when you hire someone, make sure you hire the best person that you can hire. And the other thing I wanted to mention is for Boo's checkup today, it was like way cheaper than the other vet also. So I'm um, super happy right now. And Boo did such a good job. He was so good in the vet. Like I can't even tell you how good he was. And when I was leaving, um, I was talking to uh, the women that worked at the front desk and they're saying that, you know, a lot of cats come in here and attack the vet and uh, they just go crazy and start screaming and hissing and Boo did none of that. He was so, so good. It is 4.40 p.m. and Boo and I just got home. I stopped off on the way home to pick up some raw food because it was on the way and I'm just about to let Boo out. He did such a good job. We've been gone for over two hours. Okay, boo. You're home. Good job, boo. Boo is such a good boy that he is going to get some crunchies. I just put a bunch of crunchies on this plate for him. So, so let's talk about this new vet that I really like and I am really happy with. Um, I discussed a whole lot of different things with this vet and um, let's talk about Boo. So they weighed Boo and Boo weighed 14.11 pounds at the vet's office and they said Boo is not overweight. Boo's a very solid cat and he is very healthy. 
Um, they checked his heart, they checked his eyes, um, he checked his teeth. He says there's no signs of infections anywhere and there's just a little bit of tartar on like one of his side teeth and it's more cosmetic than um, anything to worry about. And with his front teeth, he says maybe there's a little bit of gingivitis there, but again, it's nothing major. And he feels that there's really um, nothing that we could do at this point because there's no infection, there's no like periodontal disease or anything like that, that it could just be genetic weaknesses as far as Boo's teeth are concerned. He also feels that uh, Boo might end up losing all of his incisors, which are the front teeth between his two fangs. He says that does happen to cats and dogs and it's not uncommon. And he says sometimes cats and dogs lose all their teeth and they have no problem um, surviving without their teeth. And um, you know, it's just like a whole wide range of uh, teeth and mouth issues. But he says Boo uh, is very healthy based on his exam and that if I did not tell him that Boo was FIV positive, there's no way he would ever know that. Um, so there's no signs or symptoms or anything else. And uh, so overall it was good. He definitely advocates a raw food diet because it is the most biologically appropriate diet for animals. Um, and then we talked about dry food and he told me that it is a myth that dry food is good for their teeth. Um, there's really no evidence to support that. It's really just a tactic used by companies that make dry food to try to sell more dry food. Um, we talked about giving Boo fresh bones, like I gave him a chicken wing bone the other day. Um, he said that could be great for him because that actually is something that is very helpful for uh, teeth and mouth health. Um, what else did we talk about? Um, he told me that Nordic Naturals uh, is making omega-3 supplements specifically for pets. Um, I didn't know that they were doing that so um, he doesn't mind giving uh, fish oil uh, to cats or dogs. Um, he also gave me information about a website about oral health and wellness for animals, um, which I have to look into. And then there, he also um, told me about a product, uh, like an immune support product for Boo if I wanted to put him on that. Um, but I told him that I had used uh, immune support herbs for Boo in the past and um, I currently also have some for him. And um, so we're, we're kind of on the same page with that stuff. Um, the one thing about this that he's not very, very well versed uh, in herbs and their use, uh, but he is um, a natural vet and uh, he is very holistically minded, uh, which is great. And um, I'm trying to think of everything else we talked about then yeah we talked about Boo he also noticed that Boo had no signs or symptoms of any kind of mouth issues or gum disease and um, I agreed with him there and I, I said I thought it was really weird that when I was like looking up information uh, he doesn't have the bad breath he doesn't have any bleeding like he doesn't have any swelling he has nothing so um, it was a little bit odd and um, yeah, overall, Boo was just a really good boy. He really behaved himself. He didn't try to get off the exam table. He didn't try to attack anyone. He didn't try to escape. He didn't hiss. Um, he was just really, really well behaved. And there were, like, really big dogs in the next room. Um, and there's like, a sliding door between the rooms. And at one point, the door was open, and Boo was pretty calm. So, uh... Who did a really, really good job. Good job, Boo. I let all the other cats up a little while ago and Stella was just checking out the carrier. Stella, you want to go for a ride in the carrier? Stella, you want to go for a ride in the carrier? 
she just ate all of Boo's breakfast that he left and did not finish, so, um, yeah. My only concern is that maybe Boo might smell a little bit different from the vet, and I don't want them, obviously, like, attacking him, but I do have to run out. Right now it's like 6.30 p.m. I just got home again, and Hydrox is hanging out. There's Hydrox. He's hanging out by that water station, and, um, yeah, that water station needs new water, but I can't put it in there now, so I'll do that tomorrow. There's still some water in here. There's a little bit of algae growing on the bottom, but I just put a plate of food down for Hydrox. It's half of a can of the Nature's Variety with some herbs on it and some green powder, catgrass powder, and some ground up pumpkin seeds. Hydrox, are you gonna eat some food? I'm about four feet away from him right now. No, I'm probably like five feet away from him right now. Hydrox, you gonna eat some food? You want some dinner? You want some dinner, Hydrox? So I just put my arm out. I didn't go near him. I didn't move myself. I just put my arm out and it made him walk away. And another thing that I talked to the vet about was the subject of fish and giving cats fish. And the vet said that there is no problem with giving cats fish several times a week. He just doesn't recommend it as an item to give cats every day or every meal. And that was Boo's food, but Simba just ate it. It's the second half of their meal. Thank you for watching this Lucky Farrells video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you'd like me to post more videos, and please make sure to check out these other videos that were selected especially for you.